Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Ed Consonant, a digital learning specialist at Boston Public Schools, and I'm here as part of our Transforming Learning with Technology series to help support teachers as part of our initiative to get more technology into the classroom and to help teachers move along the spectrum of technology integration. So thank you very much for joining us, and more importantly, thank you very much for being a part of the BPS Technology Initiative to help students achieve more with technology. I'm going to start off by talking about our, our subject today, and that is the SAMR model. Often, we have purchased technology in the past and in the district, and we've always had conversations with teachers and school administrators about how can I get more out of my technology? We're not, we don't seem to be getting the fullest potential out of it. Well, that's a really great question, and lots of educators have been asking that question, and one educator, Ruben Pontadora, came up with an answer. Uh, his model, the SAMR model, is specifically for that. How do we start using, how do we help teachers move along the spectrum or the continuum of technology integration and towards a higher order thinking or what he calls a redefinition of teaching and learning. So I'm going to share my screen with you and get started with a short presentation and I hope that you can stick with us and then participate in some of the activities and conversations that we have going on in our workplace uh, Facebook account uh, for BPS technology under the Transforming Learning with Technology community. We have the opportunity to sort of engage in a framework for evaluating technology usage in the classroom and we are part of a a question, a series of questions that identify sort of what are the four levels of the SAMR model and how do I get there with Google Apps for Education? Uh, what resources do I need in my classroom to make this work? So let's just do some basic definition. The SAMR model is based on a four ladder system and that is we have substitution and augmentation, modification and redefinition. And I'm going to reiterate those. At the substitution level, technology acts as a direct substitute without adding any functional change or improvement. At the augmentation level, technology acts as a direct tool substitute with adding some functionality. And we'll have some examples of that in a moment. These two levels of the SAMR model are what we call the enhancement layer. And that is, they enhance what we're already doing, but they don't add any significant change to the task. When we move up the ladder towards the higher order thinking, we come to modification and redefinition. redefinition. Modification is that technology really allows for significant task design. And redefinition opens up the door to the world of student creation, student control, student choice, and options in their learning. In other words, technology allows for the creation of new tasks previous, previously inconceivable. So I want to take you through this ladder as a Boston Public Schools educator and look at a specific tool that we have available to us. And by no means are we limited to using a tool. And I want to restate something that Dr. Puntendera uh, also says, and that is that in looking at how tools can impact learning, we see a lot of good tools, digital storytelling apps that help students express themselves uh, better. But what he came to the conclusion, and many of us in technology have come to as well, is that it's not about the tool so much as it is about the practice, the strategies that teachers use and develop in a constant, reflective, reiterative manner to improve their craft and their strategies to help students achieve higher order thinking. Then we get to the tools. So first, it's all about the teaching and learning. I'm using this slide, which for some educators who have been around a little while, this might represent something very familiar and also represents something that we have seen for a while, um, but it, it, to me it represents the intersection between pedagogy and technology. And that is, this Bloom's taxonomy pyramid, the revised Bloom's, notice that the the layers of the blooms are now verbs instead of nouns with creating be at, being at the higher order thinking. And a lot of the apps or types of technology that help us meet those higher order thinking skills. And that is creation tools, YouTube, voice threads, voice creation tools, digital storytelling, 
things that put learning in the hands of the students and ownership in the student's wheelhouse. So this is a combination of SAMR trying to help us reach these higher order thinking skills at that intersection of technology and pedagogy. So what is SAMR and why are we paying attention to it? I don't think that we've had a lot of experience evaluating the way we use technology. So this model helps us analyze and benefit from creating communities of educators who are looking at their practice, looking at their use of technology to see if it's adding significant difference, to understand whether the task at hand could be improved, modified with technology, or if it is impossible without that technology. And so we're going to look at some of the things that we do in classrooms and how that might impact our decision to use technology or not. One of my favorite educators is Sylvia Duckworth, and she likens SAMR to the swimmer. As you can see, the substitution level where tech acts as a direct substitute, we have somebody in the water who's just going for a boat ride. In augmentation, tech acts as a direct tool with some functional improvement, snorkeling. And then on to modification, we're getting underneath the layers, getting into deeper waters. Deeper learning is the modification where it does add some significant task redesign. And the redefinition, a submarine experience like no other. Deep diving, rigorous work, demanding tasks, conversations, social learning, and what we like to call these days personalized learning for every student to be successful. And that is when tech allows for the creation of, of new tasks previously, previously inconceivable without it. So there's the line as well, that horizontal line between enhancement and transformation is that threshold. And Dr. Puntandora talks about how many teachers have to be comfortable before they dive into those deep waters. And many of them will be at the substitution and augmentation stage for some time, getting comfortable with the use of tools, developing their strategies and their pedagogy to help integrate these tools for higher order thinking. And only then can we move above that threshold line to really modify and redefine learning. So how do we get started? What's a good way for us to look at it in BPS? Well, we have iPads in the schools, we have Chromebooks in the schools, and so let's just look at some of the things that we already have here that at our disposal, at our fingertips for teachers and for students. And of course, I'm talking about the G Suite or Google Apps for Education suite of tools. We have Blogger, we have Google Docs, we have Google Drive, Google Sheets, Google Slides, Google Forms, YouTube. We have a lot of places we can store our files these days in BPS, storing them in the cloud in Google Drive. So I want to just talk a little bit about the basic writing process that many of us are familiar with, whether you're a science teacher, an English teacher, history. You know that students are required to write essays and nonfiction persuasive essays are very important for students to develop their, their voice and their argument, their ability to argue a position. So the tools that we look here in a pre-writing stage where students are required to brainstorm, perhaps create mind maps and drawing them out on a sheet of paper, can easily be done using a tool like Google Drawing, where we can create a mind map. And so that would be a direct substitute, taking a handwritten mind map for a pre-writing assignment and turning it into a Google Drawing, which gives a, the ability of the teacher to see it digitally. In the augmentation stage, we might ask a student to comment on that drawing and uh, two students collaborate on it. Thus, it is the same task with a little bit of added functionality. So at the substitution and the augmentation phase, pre-writing can be done using Google Drawing and it can be done just by creating the mind map or by adding comments or a peer editor. And when we get into the writing part of it, then we can start thinking about using Google Docs. And Google Docs adds add some functionality to it. Not only can we format a text like you, you could not do on a handwritten essay, but in an argumentative essay, we can have people doing research tool in the Google Doc and have the teacher commenting and 
other peers editing the document also. Again, at the augmentation phase, we've integrated a little bit more functionality, but in essence have not changed the task at all. And the same we go through the, the revision, the editing, and the publishing phase. So at all aspects of the writing process, we see ways that we can integrate Google tools to help us substitute or augment the, the task at hand. But neither of those add significant improvement to the task except with functionality. So what if we want to go ahead and go to the modification and redefinition redef phase? As I showed you here, we have the student essay and the substitution. You can see the handwritten essay versus the Google Docs essay with comments on the side. At the augmentation phase, teachers are using a Google Doc and adding comments, highlighting things and making suggestions, and using Google Classroom to distribute and collect assignments. So we've added some functionality to the task of writing an argumentative essay, uh, streamlined it, made it more efficient, but essentially the task is the same. At the end, their students are passing in an essay. So at the modification, thinking of that argumentative essay for, that the student is doing, Tech allows for significant task redesign. So let's think about our Google tools for a second and think about how Google Slides, uh, also known as Google Presentation, can take an essay and turn it into a digital story. By adding pictures, by adding audio clips and video clips, a student has redesigned his or her assignment so that it is, has different components and multi-layers to it. In addition to that, students can also take that slide, set of slides and share it. And sharing is one of the features of Google Docs for Education or Google Apps for Education that has really had an impact on the classroom community, allowing students to work together as editors, as people to spot check for issues, and contribute to each other's learning. So learning takes a different task at this level. It goes from an individual to a social event or a social experience, bringing others into the fold and sharing the, those learners' experience. So at the modification level, we have Google Slides. We can also use something like Blogger. Student blogging is a very important part of a life skill these days. And in addition to a, an argumentative essay, students can create a blog post and receive comments. And that blog post does not have to go with just between the student and the teacher. But in essence, we have changed the game a little bit and sharing it with other people. Perhaps we're sharing it with a, at a community event. Perhaps we're sharing with somebody across the country who was also studying that particular topic and wants to be informed and share the, her students' experiences. So the sharing and the publication of things to an authentic audience helps take this task of writing an argumentative essay to a new, new level and allows for significant task design. And those tools in the Google Suite are just a couple of the ones that can help modify that. And redefinition, we have the opportunity that would be previously be unavailable without the technology. So let's just pause and think about that a second. What can students do these days that would be inconceivable years ago without the technology? Well, let's talk about digital storytelling or movie making, uh, creating YouTube videos, creating a blog post and doing a Google Hangout with experts to do research and students are online. Students make decisions in their own learning around these tools and how to use these tools and what information to get. Researching, conducting interviews, presenting things via multimedia, audio files and video files, photographs, integrating multi-layers embedded within the document so that the task that is was once just a one-dimensional argumentative essay on paper has now become an interactive website that is bringing people in to share that information, bringing knowledge together from many different parts, from experts to authentic audiences who are giving comments and people who are contributing to the, the content creation. 
So redefinition using tools like Google Hangouts, slides as presentation, using a YouTube channel to convey and to communicate with broader audiences significantly allows for the new task to be done in new ways that would not be possible without the technology. Google has many of those tools that we underutilize and that can add significant enhancements and transformation in our student learning. So when we talk about SAMR and Bloom's taxonomy and our goal being transformation in the classroom or reaching those higher order thinking skills, we have to ask ourselves about the technology. What will I gain from replacing the old with the new? Will adding technology make an improvement to a task at a fundamental level? Does this task depend on the new technology? And how is it uniquely made possible by the new technology? A favorite um, educator of mine who used to work for BPS, Joe Kidd, once said, we have to prepare our students for the 21st century for jobs that haven't been created yet, for problems that are unknown yet. So it's that independent creative thinking, that ability to take control and solve problems that is at the heart of what, how we need to prepare our students for the 21st century. And, and digital technology can help us get there. So what are some tools that, and resources to get me started? I'm gonna just show you a couple of tools. Uh, we have our Boston Public Schools G Suite for Education. We have a resource here that I wanna share with you. And that's a, a website that was created by our digital learning team. And it's a G Suite guide for BPS. If you haven't explored the Google Suite of tools or if you're only using your Gmail and G Calendar and you're, you feel like maybe you're at the ready to take on uh, one of these rungs on the SAMR ladder, go to this G Suite for BPS and become familiar with Google Docs and how we can support you doing more with Google Drive, more with Google Docs and Classroom. Learn how to share a document and how to provide comments to students and feedback and see what enhancements you can make. Dr. Pointadora often says that it's important for teachers to be comfortable. And one of the challenges that we're asking you today in our subsequent activities is to identify a favorite activity that you've done with technology and identify what part of the SAMR you think it's on. And if you don't feel like you're there yet, we want you to get comfortable at the substitution level. If you're used to assigning students tasks on paper, try using a Google Doc. All our students have Google accounts. You now have Chromebooks. It's, a pos it's very possible that you can start seeing those enhancements in your work, and as a result, you start to change your practice. You start to think of what more do I need to teach about literature and nonfiction? What kind of cognitively demanding task can I now go along with because I know how to enhance my lesson using technology? So we are here to support you with these Google resources. We are here to support you in trying to create strategies to use those resources to help that higher order thinking skills and we look forward to working with you even more. Here are some other digital learning resources that I just wanted to share. It is a Padlet is one of our favorite brainstorming tools where you can post ideas and collaborate with others to make learning visible as an exit ticket, as a quick assessment. There are Common Sense Media is a site that many educators across the country are using for digital citizenship and where educators are going to get curriculum on technology integration. So if you're wondering how to do it, where to do it, why to do it, check out some of these resources. There's so many educators are out there like you trying to learn new ways of improving student learning and to get the most out of their technology. We now have robust access in our schools for uh, wireless. We have tools in the hands of many students and all of those tools are being shared in our classroom. So we are truly becoming a 21st century district and you and your students are becoming 21st century teachers and learners. 
Remember that we have a social organization called BPS Workplace. It is our community where we can share. It's a social media community and we would like to see you there contributing things, making posts, asking questions, and inviting us to be a part of your learning as you delve into the waters of SAMR, a Bloom's taxonomy of technology integration. Please don't forget to see our activities and reflection form that's associated with the webinar and posted on our schedule of webinar sheet. It is there for you to participate in. We look forward to seeing your responses. We look forward to hearing your questions. And remember, mistakes are opportunities to learn even more. And that's what we're here for, to support you, to help you uh, to grow and for your students to succeed. Thank you very much, and it's a pleasure working with you. I'm Ed Considine, a BPS Technology Digital Learning Specialist, and we'll see you soon. Thank you.